afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, I think I've been given the green light to go with the end of that uh, video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Kashipa Bukas. I am the CEO of the Solana Bay Industrial Development Zone. Um, I'm going to be the host uh, for our first drone tech talk today. Um, so welcome to all drone enthusiasts. Um, just a little bit about the, the drone tech talks and where they sit. Um, the Drone Tech Innovation Showcase is the first event in a series of events brought to you by the Soldana Bay Innovation Campus, which is an initiative of the Soldana Bay Industrial Development Zone. Um, and these events include these uh, Drone Tech Talks, an Entrepreneur Boot Camp, a Game of Drones pitching event, um, all leading up to our first Innovation Day. Uh, please follow our LinkedIn page, Saldana Bay Industrial Development Zone, for more information, or drop your details in the chat, and our team will add you to the mailing list. A few housekeeping points from our end. Uh, your mics have been muted for the duration of the session. We encourage you to comment in the chat box throughout the session, but request that you only send questions once uh, we're open uh, the, the Q&A session. These questions will be prioritized. Uh, when we open the Q&A session, please indicate in the chat box that you have a question. So there are administrators in the background, busy bees, um, uh, looking, looking at both uh, um, uh, boxes. But it will be a case of the fastest fingers first, so uh, we can unmute you and give you an opportunity to ask your question to the speaker directly. Um, this makes things a bit more interactive, and we hope you like that aspect. Um, Without further ado, I hand over to Sam Twala, um, founder and managing director of Intu uh, Aviation Solutions for his talk on the drone ecosystem in South Africa. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I know he has a lot of insight to share from his vast experience, um, just looking at his bio and uh, just reading up on his company on, online. So um, thank you and over to you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Kachifa, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what I will do, let me try and share uh, my slides. Uh, I prepared a few slides to assist uh, with this conversation to make sure that uh, it flows nicely. Uh, please let me know if you can see, uh, where is it? If you can see yes, my can see. slides. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you uh, to Kachifa and the organizers of uh, this event. I'm very honored to be talking here, to be part of this um, uh, important uh, occasion. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, some introduction, I will not talk more about, uh, about myself, except uh, just a bit on what uh, Kachifa has already said. I'm a managing director of Intu Aviation Solutions, and I've been in uh, drone industry, I would say officially from uh, 2009, while I was still working for, for Denel Dynamics. And basically what we do as Intu Aviation Solutions, we are a consulting uh, company. We assist you know, organizations, entrepreneurs, or anyone who wants to get into drone industry with the legal side of things. Uh, as you may understand that for one to be able to operate drone, uh, legally in South Africa, you need to go through the approval processes with the regulator, which is our civil aviation uh, organization, I mean, civil aviation authority. So we are in the past, we've assisted a couple of uh, organizations, including one government entity. Uh, I know I have about 15 minutes to go through uh, this uh, presentation. As a matter of fact, I think I wanted to share my uh, video as well so that people can see while I'm talking, let me do that. I actually forget, forgot to do that. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so that you can know and see who's speaking. All right, there we go. So just quickly, uh, you know, I'm aware that I don't have much time. So what I'm going to look at would be just a highlight. And if we really need to get into details, please use that opportunity when we get to a Q&A session. So what I would look at just briefly, uh, drone industry in South Africa, where we started and where are we today? Uh, uh, ecosystem, you know, who's involved currently in drone industry today? And as far as uh, regulated and indirectly regulated, and I would also, uh, and then I would conclude. 
So with drone industry, if you may be aware, drone regulations were promulgated in South Africa in uh, 20, 2015. So we have about uh, six years or so with regulations being in place. And I just want to look at, you know, back then in, in 2015, you know, uh, this is how I put it. I say it was a, a lucrative business just to have, uh, have a drone and one to be to have that license from civil aviation authority. I mean, at a time, you'd be in a good place to make good money, right, in 2015. However, the industry has since moved from, from the, you know, just one being able to take, uh, take off, take a picture and, you know, sell that picture for a uh, good fortune. And where we sort of moved, you know, in 2018, uh, we looked at uh, where we moved towards, you know, just taking a picture on, the, on its own, it's not good enough anymore. Now, out of that picture, out of uh, one taking off and flying that drone, we're looking at, you know, what, being able to extract useful information from that picture that, 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 you, that you may have to be using uh, a drone. So, and then looking at where we are in 2020, we now got to an era where we say for businesses, it's one thing buying a drone and using it as a business, right? However, it becomes more useful to say, yes, I bought a drone and this drone has to, you know, I take this drone as a tool and must integrate into my other business processes, you know, your business flows. So that's the, the era where, where we found ourselves in and where we are, uh, you know, next stage is, you know, we're looking at some intelligence, some machine learning, you know, uh, when you use use drones, you know, uh, fly a drone. However, you need to give some intelligent information. You should be able to, you know, uh, apply uh, some technology to make sure that when you fly that drone, uh, you'll be able to detect automatically number plate and read that number plate. Be able to take off and say, "This is a human being. This is a dog. This is a cat." You know, this is a kind of information. This is an era where we find ourselves uh, currently. Right yeah, in, in in 2021, and you know, as you would uh, you would imagine, when you talk about the intelligence, this is a, a trend that is growing. This is a trend that is getting uh, more and more popular. And looking at uh, uh, no, sorry about the the uh, what do you call the the title there. I'm not concluding as yet. Um, the drone industry where we are today, we have uh, suppliers right in drone in drone industry, and then the ones that I'm looking at. Uh, right now would be regulated. Now, what I mean with regulated is for one to provide training in drone, uh, drone industry today, you need to be to go through the uh, compliance processes where Civil Aviation Authority approves you as a train, uh, train provider. However, in this instance, you know, not all trainings are regulated by the Civil Aviation Authority. Now, in this instance, we are talking about like your parallel license training. You know, we talk about your safety management system, your quality management system. However, there are other types of training which are not necessarily regulated by the CAA. And um, on the left here, you have a DSP, your drone service provider. Uh, as a drone service provider, as I've indicated earlier, one needs to be uh, approved by the Civil Aviation Authority. And then you have your uh, what you call an ROC, which is ARPAS Operator Certificate. And then on the right here, if you provide a maintenance, you know, in, in uh, drone industry, you need to have a license as a person, as a technician, you need to have RMT license, which is called the ARPAS maintenance technician. And then there are also a number of people with, who are involved in drone operations, which from a CAA point of view, they need to be licensed. And those, as I've mentioned, example would be like your safety manager, like your quality manager, your pilots, and, and your technicians, as I've indicated right here. However, this other side of the spectrum, right, which uh, I would say indirectly regulated, meaning as an individual, you can get into this business and really, really uh, form start a career, right? As an example, as a manufacturer, currently from CAA point of view, CAA doesn't require anyone who manufactures or designs drones to have any type of approval. And I must say, the reason why I'm saying indirectly it's simply because as a manufacturer, you're going to have a client, you're going to sell your drone to someone, and most probably it's going to be your DSP, which will be your drone service provider. So CAA, uh, you know, they don't regulate manufacturers. However, they, they, they regulate or they look at what manufacturers or designers do through uh, operators, not, not directly as, as manufacturers. 
So uh, like as a software developer, you can get involved in drone industry and uh, you don't need any piece of paper from CA to say you are approved or you are a credited software developer. Uh, training as well. As I've indicated, there are certain types of training which are regulated by the, by the authority, and then there are other types of training that may not necessarily be regulated. This, if I can give an example, let's say you've been in uh, you know, software development uh, industry for many years, you understand that, that area. You can start you know, training young people, you can start training people uh, you know, to write softwares, to write, uh, you know, uh, to write softwares which would be specific or maybe would be used mostly in, in the industry. Like consulting, like myself, you know, uh, as a consultant in drone industry, you don't necessarily get any piece of paper or approval from from, from the regulator. Uh, that data analytics, right? Uh, as, in, uh, as someone who uh, analyzes data, as I've indicated earlier, that someone will, you know, uh, you know, uh, take off with a drone, take pictures, take a video. Someone has to analyze that information. Someone has to analyze that data. Uh, CAA does not uh, accredit uh, such people you know, uh, at all. So these are other types of, uh, let me call them careers, that as an individual, you can get involved in, uh, in drones, whether it's directly re re regulated by the Civil Aviation Authority or indirectly, indirectly re uh, regulated. And like I've indicated, what I mean with indirectly, there's not really anything that you can do uh, on its own that is standing alone and you're able to make um, uh, business in drone industry because one way or the other, whether you are involved in uh, data analytics, consulting, training, software development, or manufacturers, one way or the other, you have to find a way to sell your, 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 your products through uh, drone service providers uh, uh, or also uh, through training organizations. This is uh, the, the picture that, this picture here, it's sort of uh, similar to what I just indicated now. At the core, you will have your drone industry, and I would also put Civil Aviation Authority right here in the middle. And then you have your, your training organizations, which are known as ATOs, and you have your DSPs, as I've mentioned. These are core to drone industry, especially if you look at current legislation. And attached to these two, whether it's a training organization or, or DSP, then uh, you have prescribed personnel, which uh, are prescribed by the Civil Aviation regulation, uh, Regulations, to say each and every uh, organization, you must have a control manager, you must have operations manager, and you might find that operations manager manager is someone who might, uh, you know, be uh, have or had a pilot license. You have pilots, quality uh, managers, you have technicians, maintenance managers, instructors, especially when you look at ATOs, and then training managers as well when you're looking at ATOs. There are then other uh, roles, uh, you know, I've just picked a few, uh, if you look at, at, at this wheel here, but there are many, many other uh, careers that one can, can, can begin or can get involved in, in, in drones. And like I indicated earlier, you might want to be aware and take into account that, you know, it's a regulated business or it might be indir indirectly uh, regulated. And the, obviously, uh, we all get into drones because we want to make money and uh, who's your, uh, your client or, or user. Uh, I just picked a few industries here. However, this is by no means like the, the entire list. You have uh, mining, you have rail inspection, you have uh, agricultural, uh, crop spraying could be smart farming as well. You have real estate. You have um, uh, maybe for, for sports and cinematography, we have uh, drone deliveries, uh, deliveries. In the middle here, I try to list all types of operations which are possible when you look at drones. However, there's just no way that one could list everything. As a matter of fact, when I was putting this slide together, I was, I was saying it would be much easier if someone can ask me which type, uh, you know, what is it that one won't be able to do with drones than trying to answer a question of what is it that one can do with a drone? So almost everything. And the beauty and the nice thing about drones is, uh, you know, the applications or the applications of drones cut across, you know, uh, any, uh, any industry, almost all industry. So you must just pick one and then go for it. And that would uh, actually bring me to a conclusion where I would say, uh, you know, if you are sitting there and you're thinking, I want to get in drone industry, where do I start? And the best place to start would be your, your expertise and your interest should be the starting point. You should take into account what is it that you are passionate about? What is it that you know? What is it that 
um, uh, you like to do. And that should be your starting point, right? Uh, and then uh, the careers in drone, don't look for careers in drones, rather bring your expertise and passion to drone industry and start a business. It's either you start a business or you could literally start a career where you can approach uh, drone operators, like I've indicated, those will be you know, the organizations which are in the for forefront because one way or the other, you need to find a way to work with uh, those licensed entities. Uh, with the drone business, um, one common question that I get all the time is, where do I start, right? Uh, if I want to get in, in, in drones. And my response here would be, uh, you know, the basic principles of starting a business, they still apply in drones. Uh, it doesn't mean just because you have a drone, a drone on it itself, it's going to be a business case. You still need to sit down and draft your business case. Start to look at the market. Where are the opportunities? Where, what kind of service uh, that you're going to offer? And this, uh, by the way, links with the, uh, the, the previous statement that I've indicated earlier to say, as a human being, as a person, you already have expertise. You already have a passion. So what you need to do then is based on your passion, based on expertise, now you can start thinking how are you going to build a business around that? And not forgetting that, you know, simple things like, you know, writing your, your business plan, that still apply. Even if this is a drone, but that uh, concept is still applicable, right? And the most important part, especially if you're going to uh, introduce drones in the in bus uh, existing business, I would say, take into account that uh, everything that you think of, uh, let me say if it's a business opportunity, at the center of your thinking process, you must think that, is this going to be possible looking at the regulatory environment, looking at regulations, is this going to be possible? And the reason why I'm mentioning this is you find that people really, really go wild uh, as far as this is what I want to do with drones, but the way they get stuck, and by the way, this uh, I've experienced this, I've seen this with uh, big organizations as well, with, uh, with, with deep pockets, where they have an idea in terms of using drones, but they forget the simple thing, the fundamentals, which would be, uh, you know, from regulations point of view, is your idea possible looking at the current legislation? It might not be possible today. CAA keeps uh, looking at uh, revising regulations. Regulations are going to be more open. Certain types of operations which are not possible today, they're going to be possible in the future. So that will help you to think and streamline uh, your business case to say, this is what I'm going to do today. This is what I'm going to do five years down the line. This is what I'm going to do uh, 10, uh, 10 years down the line. So most of the case, uh, most of the time, what people do is they go to CAA, they sell the business case, but they forget that CAA has a mandate, which is aviation safety. So when they look at your application, the first question that they ask is, is this going to be safe? Even if you tend to, you, you stand to make a lot of money, millions uh, you know, of rents, but if the operation itself is not safe, and it's unlikely that you're going to get uh, that kind of approval from the Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, from here, I will take questions. If there are any questions, I know this was a sort of rushed presentation. I just tried to brush on everything in case there are questions and we can get, can deal with those questions individually. Thank you very much, Kashi. Thanks, Sam. I think that was a great setup um, for the, the the whole showcase that that we're doing um, over the next few months. Because, um, like I said in the intro, one of the aspects is the game of drones pitching challenge. And um, what we're trying to do uh, with these tech talks, these uh, thirty-minute tech talks, is really to set the scene of uh, you know, like this allow people to discover the commercial applications possible, the business models, and the different, I want to say the different elements in the business model that are important. And I mean, that's the ecosystem, really. It's, it's the same thing. Um, right. So uh, thanks, Sam. I see, uh, uh, please um, raise your hand. Um, and we're tracking it and we'll unmute you and then you can ask a question. Uh, the first question in the box, um, Luther, um, who has a very direct question. I need to start a drone business. Who can I partner with? Is it clear enough, Kasifa? Good morning. Are you well? <laughs> oh, good afternoon. Are you well? I'm well. Thanks, Luther. Thank you. No, it's, I just um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I can start and grow a business but I don't have the technical expertise of uh, being a drone business. I need 
uh, a person with the skills and competencies that I can help growing a business and we can partner because I've got a great opportunity in farming. Thanks for that. That's a very good question and a very valid question. And I actually see that a lot. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you actually stood up and put it that way. Uh, the mistake that a lot of people also make is trying to think that you're going to make, uh, make it on your own, right? And the drone industry, it's quite, uh, you know, it's, it has evolved a lot, you know, since 2015. And the, the, the industry has become very, very competitive. So it's important that you stick to what you know and what you know best and make sure that then you bring in partners which would uh, enhance what, uh, you know, the knowledge and expertise that you have to make sure that you, you know, you, you excel in what you do. So, however, the question that you're asking, it's at this moment, it's a little bit tricky, you know, to find area or place where one could say, uh, you know, where do I find like-minded people so who, can, who can I partner with? And what I would say is attending forums such as this, uh, that would be a good start because, you know, you might find that there might be someone as we speak right now who also has opportunities or who might have interest in, 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 in uh, drone applications, especially in farming. And, uh, you know, you, then that person might contact you. However, if you, you really battle with that, uh, finding someone, please get in contact with me. Uh, like I said, a, this is a very, very common question that I get out there. Uh, to say who can I partner with, so I might be able to assist you and may probably, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 give you contacts of those people that have had those kind of interactions with before. Because I know if, if if you can't send me somebody, you will stand in. Thank you for that. You need to share <laughs> your contact details, please. Right, fantastic. Will... I will. I will. I will do that. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Luther. Um, Wayne's got a question. What vision do you have of the drone economy of in, in the next five to ten years? So where do you see this, this heading? Wow. Uh, geez, if, 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 if it was up to me, everything would be drone. <laughs> and every, every type of uh, career, one way or the other, it would have, it would have something to do with, it, with, with a drone. However, uh, look, this industry, uh, we started in 2015 and it has been growing and it will continue to grow. The reason being, uh, as I've indicated, that the, the beauty of, of drones is uh, each and every industry that you can think of, one way or the other, there will be application of drones, one way or the other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, one of the reasons why we haven't really seen this industry growing that much uh, would be you know, regulatory restrictions. And, and this would be, as I've indicated earlier, from Civil Aviation Authority, including uh, ATNS, which is Air Traffic and Navigation Services, one of the things that they're really working on is, uh, today we have uh, airspace with routes. You know, it's, it's, it's relatively easy for aircraft taking off from Muwaratambo. If you go to, uh, you know, Cape Town International Airport, you know, it, it's quite clear how you fly that route. One of the biggest challenges, of course, is when it comes to, to, to drones, uh, drones, they want to fly from point A to point B, you know, with a direct uh, straight of line, right? That is a problem on its own. So we are still at a position where, uh, you know, air traffic control uh, and navigation services, including civil aviation authority, they need to come up with systems to say how we're going to manage a lot of drones in our airspace. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a restriction where we find ourselves in today. However, that's uh, uh, you know the conversations which are going currently between the regulator, including ATNS, including the Department of Transport, to say how do we find a way to solve all those uh, issues, uh, you know, so that this industry can grow. However, all I can say in general is this industry is yet to grow. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I think if that is like the one. If that problem can be solved, then the deepening of drone usage will just explode. Like it, it will just it'll just take off. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And maybe yeah. just one last thing that I can add. One old uh, the element that drone brought about when you look at um, let me say uh, work opportunities in South Africa. Drone give you that opportunity to start your own business. 
right? Uh, and like it really, really gives you that opportunity. Whereas previously, it might have been a little bit tricky. It might have been a little bit difficult. You know, whether you're talking aviation strictly on its own, uh, however, or if you go to mining, you go to agriculture, you go to security, there's one little thing, if you sit down and think hard about a value proposition, you think about what kind of problems that any particular industry that you may have identified, what kind of a problem or challenge that they are facing today that can be solved with a drone? There'll always be at least one. So it really gives that opportunity to say, don't also rely on finding work, finding employment, but you can be employer yourself. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's quite important in South Africa's context these days. We, we know small businesses are the bigger employer, um, yes. you know, in, in our economy. Uh, there's a question from Carl. What does an ROC cost? What is an ROC? <laughs> <laughs> My right. question. Uh, ROC, uh, you know, briefly going back to what I said earlier, the op drone operations in South Africa are regulated, right, by civil aviation or, uh, uh, authority. And ROC is one of approvals that you require as an organization to offer drone service, right, and invoice people for your services, right? So, um, and, and ROC is only one component. There are approvals that you need, like your, your pilots need to be licensed. Uh, because as an individual to be licensed, your technicians that you are using in organization, they need to be licensed. Um, your, the drone itself that you use, that you fly, you know, uh, to offer that service as well, it needs to be licensed. So the, all in all, I think there are about six or seven licenses that one uh, requires to be li uh, fully licensed to drone operator. And I think the reason for ROC is that to be the overarching license, right? So that, it, it honestly depends on, uh, you know, whether you really need your, to get your license as quickly as possible, you're going to use uh, services of uh, a consultant like myself, or you're going to try and, and you know, apply through civil aviation uh, authority yourself. However, if you try to uh, apply yourself, I know the process may take long. I mean, there have been stories that people say it has taken them three, four years. You know, to get a license. So that would depend really if you use a consultant, and uh, you know, obviously the quality of consultant as well. That would that would that would count. But if I really really had to estimate uh, where you say I need my license as soon as possible, and with all costs taken into account, and I just need someone to assist me with the process from start to finish, you may be looking at anything between one hundred and fifty thousand rands, probably to two hundred thousand rands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's a. I mean, it's a. It's it's a big investment, and I suppose um, one of the tech, tech talks later in the week is on drone regulations. And I think if we if we have this potential in the drone industry, um, you know, to be an employer and to meet uh, client demand and solve problems um, across different industries. Um, then we need to make the cost of doing business lower um, so that it's, it's, you know, the barriers to entry can, comes to mind. Um, and I'm, I'm curious in the following, when we do the boot camp and the pitching event, um, how the business models will take that on, you know, and um, dealing with um, the, 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 the trainers and, and, and putting those business models together. But thanks. Mm -hmm. um, next question. Um, how does the drone industry overcome the right to privacy? Yeah. Yes, uh, that was, uh, that, that is always a difficult question. <laughs> uh, especially if you look at uh, the new act, you know, the Propia Act that came into effect, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it really, really threw a spanner in the works, right? Mm -hmm. However, uh, what I, it, it all depends how you want to look at it. There are people with right intentions and there are people with ill intentions. So we must always separate the two. And it's always difficult, uh, almost impossible even, no matter how much rules you can write on paper, uh, if someone has ill intentions, they have ill intentions. They will break those rules anyway in the first place. However, the beauty of uh, regulating drones is once you are a, a, a business and you're regulated, so you'll then be, um, let me say first, to have processes 
to make sure that you don't infringe on any other rules apart from civil aviation authority. One example being uh, you know, the privacy or, or papaya in, in, in general. So the legal operators, they went as far as having internal uh, processes, procedures to make sure that they don't infringe. However, as I've indicated that the problem is, and this would be a real issue is, no matter how much rules you want to write, you know, if someone wants to break a law, they want to break a law, and what now has to step in would then be enforcement, or to say, what do we do about those who don't follow rules, who don't follow regulations? So that's the only way uh, to sort of put it. However, when it comes to privacy, one question that I always ask was, uh, there's this uh, heightened threat, if I can put it that, about drones. The reason why I'm saying that is, generally, uh, people don't worry much, they don't ask questions, if a helicopter flies over their house, right? And by the way, that helicopter might have even a better uh, a camera. It might, you know, it, it didn't, it's capable of taking in pictures or videos. However, simply because we're talking about drones, then people start to have this thinking that a uh, drone must be this sinister piece of equipment. Uh, whereas if really your intention, my intention was to take a picture of your house, or video, I have other means to do that, not necessarily by drones. I mean, satellites are getting better today, uh, these days. You know, you'll be able to get certain images, right? So the, it's that uh, societal stereotype and thinking that uh, with the drones, it's only possible to spy on someone using a drone, but there are other means, you know, to, to, to spy on, a, on, on someone using other technologies. But that's just my view, and you can tell that I'm pro-drone, probably that's the reason why I'm saying that. So uh, uh, yeah, basically I'll put it that way to say, yeah, there's nothing that one can do uh, if someone just wants to do something illegal. It's, it's quite difficult because there's no way, there's not even a technology today to detect drones where they're not supposed to be. So it's, it's quite a tricky situation. And at this stage, it's something that as a society through uh, including government and, and, and regulators, they still need to find a way around that. Mm -hmm. No, great. Um, we've got three questions here, but I know we've run out of time. Um, and uh, so I just want to check, do, do, we, do we have time for, for, um, for, for to answer them, to you, if we can stay on longer? Um, yes, on, on my side, I'm okay, as long as uh, everyone okay. else is happy, yes. No, great. Okay, there's an interesting question here from uh, uh, Tal. So he says, um, abroad, we see the smart city concept, you know, coming into the fore where they actually incorporate drones in the, the way cities are designed and planned and, 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 and provided for infrastructure. So like uh, dedicated airspace um, and integrated management bodies to create these services. So they're planning for drones in the city planning. Um, and uh, what he's saying is in South Africa, we don't necessarily then need to recreate the wheel, you know, standing on the shoulders of others. Um, are you benchmarking any of those initiatives abroad? And what do you feel from those concepts can easily be incorporated into South Africa's um, municipal systems? Mm. Or are we, it's, it was it a bit too soon? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it is too soon uh, as such. However, the, that concept on its own, um, if we're talking uh, in, in general also, uh, uh, let me concentrate on uh, air mobility, right? Uh, with the depots, you know, one being able to, you know, get inside a drone, maybe that will land on top of a building and then uh, fly to their destination. So there's still a long way to go when it comes to that. Uh, at this stage, we're still talking about concept. We're still talking about uh, experiments or proof of concept. There's no country in the world where you could say that concept is fully operational and, and, and uh, they've been, they, everyone, they have figured out how that should work because it takes a lot to get to that point. As I've indicated earlier, I mean, one of the things that we have to take into account is today, uh, aircraft uh, are certified. You know, why as a passenger working inside that aircraft, you know, without even thinking that you're going to make it into your, uh, to your destination, it's simply because of, uh, you know, the, the, the safety culture that aviation, you know, uh, got to adopt over a number of years. And one of the important components would be uh, aircraft are certified. They go through the process of certification. And to date, you know, we don't necessarily have certification standards for drones. Now, if you don't have certification standards, 
you cannot necessarily just say because there's a need, let's just go and fly. Because anyway, they, as I've indicated, that the Civil Aviation Authority, they have a responsibility to make sure that uh, everyone is safe. So uh, those are some of the things, gaps that we still need to cover before we can get to a point where we say we have a fully functional system where one can get inside the drone and, and fly from one point to the next. And the other point, what I've indicated earlier, uh, you know, uh, in terms of airspace, how do you do that? You know, we can both agree that if we don't have a system that will direct and make sure that, you know, you, you know, you, 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 you give directions from, for one drone to fly from next point to the next without colliding with another drone. That concept on its own, that system on its own, uh, there's no one in the world who has figured it out as yet. You know, it's still a concept that is in, is in, is in progress. Yes, to some extent, it works with, in certain countries, maybe uh, uh, not, 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 not everywhere. So that process as well, what you're talking about, it's a work in progress. We're going to get there. I don't think we really need to uh, rush anything. We need to progressively work towards such, such adv advancements. Could we work faster? Yes, we, I think we can work faster. Are we working fast enough? I don't think so. But at the same time, we cannot rush that idea or concept to say it must be you know, implemented in South Africa or, or any other country within two years or three years. It's going to take some time. Yeah, I hear you. From Zukile, um, Sam, what are your thoughts on umbrella ROCs? <laughs> Is this a big question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, uh, I can give my my uh, my views on that. Is I mean, if you look at uh, Part One One regulations, you know, which are the, the regulations which you know regulate drone industry, you know, in South Africa, they do not necessarily prohibit that, right? There's nothing wrong with uh, umbrella ROC. However, uh, there are certain concepts that we need, uh, need to be taken through, uh, through the process, you know, whether uh, on that, uh, I know a lot of people actually don't like the idea of calling it the umbrella ROC. Uh, however, from my point of view, there's nothing wrong with the concept as long as from the ROC point of view, or those who have been charged with the responsibilities, if you remember my slides, I was saying, uh, for every ROC, there are people who have certain responsibilities. As long as they're able to perform those functions, those responsibilities, it becomes uh, it becomes easier. I mean, one of uh, the basic requirement from civil aviation regulations is uh, operational control, right? So as long as uh, the ROC holder they do have uh, control on that drone, that shouldn't be a problem because that's what is being prescribed within the regulations. But uh, over and above that, you know, when you talk about uh, safety management system, quality management system, as long as uh, those functions are able to perform their duties their roles and responsibilities as prescribed in operations manual, I don't see any problem with that concept. I know there are some people who may differ with me or might have a different views, but uh, from my point of view, I don't see any problem with that idea, as long as it is done correct. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, a question from Muneeb. Um, will South Africa relax its, its regulations to be more like the USA? Uh, he says currently most companies are locked out of drone usage by the expense of accreditation. And I think we were talking about those barriers of entry, um, you know, earlier. Um, do you, do you, yeah, do you feel, do you think that the, the regulations will relax over time? Uh, definitely, that would be the case, you know. Uh, however, the only thing that I would question against is uh, comparing drone regulations or industry in South Africa with other countries. Like if you look at uh, specifically, because you've mentioned FAA, I'll make example with FAA. Um, you know, looking from outside, it may appear or look like they figure this out, but they haven't. There's no country in the world that can say we figured out uh, how to regulate uh, drones in, in, in the country, none. They have one problem or, 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 or the other. And the reason being, drone industries are very different from one country to the next. And I can give you one example. Um, uh, not all countries can claim that they have a lot of operations in mining space, very few. Uh, in South Africa, the prominent type of operations that we see, uh, 
would be like security surveillance. Mm -hmm. That concept, you take that concept, you go to other countries, it might not work. So it's important to make sure that uh, when civil aviation authority or those involved who are, in, uh, uh, let me say, uh, politically are giving direction to this industry, they take into account what types of operations are prominent and as South Africans or as a South African industry are important to us. And then based on that, then build regulations which are enabling uh, our own industry, uh, you know, the, the, our industry to thrive based on, 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 our, on our operations or based on our desires. And one thing that I can tell you is there are certain concepts which, uh, uh, like if you look at uh, Europe, you know, EASA, what they have done, uh, they came up with a different uh, classification model, right? And that classification model, that's what we can, I would say, that's what we need in South Africa, where we say, we look at the operation itself and say, this type of operation poses less risk uh, to aviation and the requirements must be less. As an example, not every drone pilot need pilot license, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in certain instances, you don't necessarily need a pilot license, you just need the competency which is what we're looking at in uh, FAA. FAA, they really looked at that direction of not everyone needs a license, just a competence will be good enough, knowing what to take into account, knowing the basic understanding of airspace, basic understanding of aviation, that should be good enough. You write online examination and then you go. So this is the next era. This is the next uh, step in South Africa where we need to say, let us bring in the concept of categorization and make sure that we don't have one hammer for uh, every type of operation. But we say mm -hmm. uh, for certain types of operations, this uh, uh, what you need to put in place to make sure that it's safe operation. So that's the next phase. And as far as I understand, that's the next phase that CEA is, is working on. The one thing to take into account that I must mention, uh, you know, to maybe those who may not be aware, uh, South Africa was actually the first country to promulgate uh, regulations as part of uh, formal law. And that was a good thing, and sometimes such, not such a good thing, because uh, as a country at the time, we were experimenting. There was no one who to look at to say this is the best practice from this country or that other country. So we really took a, a long and a blind shot. And at a time, which is in 2015, regulations were perfect. They were okay. You know, we managed to get somewhere. However, as a country, what then happened was uh, once we had regulations, we never revisited those regulations to amend them to make sure that they cater for future requirements. And what other countries have done, they've learned from uh, mistakes that South Africa has made and started making the regulations better. So it's now time for us to go back and then review our regulations. Most countries have regulations and learn from all countries, not necessarily only one, uh, because if you just learn from one country, I don't think you're going to uh, do justice to the process. So we really need to learn from other uh, countries and learn from our industry requirements, industry needs, and then come up with a better solution. And uh, but in summary, yes, definitely our regulations are up for an upgrade. That much uh, I can say. And as a matter of fact, they have been due for an upgrade for quite a while now. Okay, great. Um, we've run out of time. There are still two questions, but I do see them. We will take the the questions down and get back to um, get back to you with answers on that. Um, but uh, Sam, thank you so much for, for your time and for your input. And um, yeah, it was a great session, a great way to start the, the week. Um, thanks everyone for, for participating and uh, tuning in. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, what I will do, I'll just leave my uh, details on, on, on Q&A box if I will be able to do that. If anyone has any question, if I have questions or needs to contact me, then I would, uh, they can do so. Yeah, we'll, we'll send out an email uh, to all of the registered participants because we have your logging details um, of the emails that you um, logged on. But sorry, I, I've been reminded there's a, there's a poll up um, has the session improved your awareness of the drone technology industry? It's a single choice uh, question. Um, please vote. And um, if you have any further comments on the, on the session, then please feel free to uh, email us at the SPIDZ um, info uh, uh, email address. But thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Have a good day, further. Thank you.